Well, good evening. We are the Harvest Trio from West Coast Baptist College. My name is AJ Payad, and I'm from British Columbia, Canada, and I'm currently taking my master's degree in Bible. Hi, my name is Ayla Schmidt, and I'm from Hartsville, Alabama, and I'm a sophomore studying music. Hello, my name is Katie Storm. I'm from Kania, Ohio, and I'm a junior studying elementary education. And at the piano is Autumn Hall. She's from Amboy, Illinois, and she's a senior studying music. I have a father, the master of time. He holds the world in his hands. He looks from heaven, sees where you are, arranging your life in his plans. Preparing you now, unfolding the way to all your tomorrows and whatever you face. He's already in your tomorrow. He's walking one step ahead. Whether it's joy or in sorrow, he'll do just what he said. He'll never leave you lonely in the land of the great unknown. He's already in your tomorrow. Don't be afraid to keep pressing on. Often you struggle looking ahead, dreading tomorrow it seems. Embracing the present, forgetting the past, giving up for your dreams. You're standing between your faith and your fear, but no matter the conflict, the future is clear. He's already in your tomorrow. He's walking one step ahead. Whether it's joy or in sorrow, he'll do just what he said. He'll never leave you lonely in the land of the great unknown. He's already in your tomorrow. Don't be afraid to keep pressing on. He's already in your tomorrow. He's walking one step ahead. Whether it's joy or in sorrow, he'll do just what he said. He'll never leave you lonely in the land of the great unknown. He's already in your tomorrow. Don't be afraid to keep pressing on. He's already in your tomorrow. story I could tell before I leave. And if I only had one message I could bring you, there's no question it would be about the cross, about the blood, about the Something beautiful about the cross. I could sing about the state of grace I live in, or the peace and joy I have when times are tough. And I could sing of all the blessings I've been given. But in the end, my life is just about the cross, about the blood, about the place I found God's mercy 
and love and although it's bittersweet remembering the cost there's something beautiful about the cross two thousand years ago if i had watched him die i think i would have lost all hope demanded to know why but now i know the cross means everything and, and it's the greatest honor to sing about the cross about the blood about the place i found god's mercy and love and although it's bittersweet remember There's something beautiful about the cross. I have a mission, a statement of faith. A reason to live and believe. Though I have failed him, he humbly forgives, showing his grace willingly. I will trust in you, holding to your truth. Amazed of his unfailing care, I bow on my knees in prayer. Sharing the gospel while traveling this side, I will give all for God. I will stand high above all my trials and fears, trusting. I will finish the race I've begun. I will live my life to live the name of Christ. For God, I will carry the light, telling the world of His Son's sacrifice. Amidst of His unfailing care, I bow on my knees in prayer. Sharing the gospel while traveling this side, I will give all for God, for God, for God. The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You feel you're walking all alone, but He is there, no doubt. When the storm around you rages, and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions, and not sure which way to go, stand still. Let God move, standing still is hard to do, when 
Nothing but 
daybreak he entered the temple to teach all of the crowd sat down at his feet he spoke with such wisdom as they never heard with amazement they listened as he taught the word all of a sudden in burst through the door a woman was brought and stood near the Lord the sin she committed was not like the rest caught in adultery the penalty death as they awaited her sentence with stones in their hands Jesus knelt down and wrote in the sand he lifted his eyes and he spoke to each one you without sin cast the first stone in just a few moments her accusers were gone no one around her she was standing alone he forgave her her sin and she went on her way and she ran to the city with joy she proclaimed just if i had never sinned just if i was always cleansed just Price was too great. My accusers had gathered. Oh, could this be the day? I cried out to Jesus. He came in my stead. He told my accusers I paid all his debt. Just if I had never sinned, just if I was always cleansed, just if I had never. song a lot, but every time I hear it, it just uh, blesses my heart, uh, the fact that we are justified uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. What a blessing, what an encouraging song uh, to end out with tonight. Um, please take your Bibles and turn to the book of Jeremiah. 
the book of Jeremiah. We're so grateful to be able to be here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Um, thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to be here, the opportunity to preach tonight. And uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm a little younger uh, than most leaders, okay? I'm uh, actually 21 years old, and uh, I wanted to just take a survey really fast before this. Um, how many of you are older than me? Okay, put your hands down. Okay, <clears throat> well, uh, just to tell you, um, I, uh, I understand tonight that you are not here to hear my opinions. Um, my opinions are worth nothing. Uh, my uh, views are worth nothing. And uh, I know that you're not here to hear a 21-year-old talk about a uh, life, to talk about his views on certain issues. But tonight we're just going to preach the Bible. And tonight we're going to turn to Jeremiah, and I can give you this promise that tonight I will not be preaching what my own views, my own opinions are, but we're just going to preach the Bible tonight. And uh, the Bible is a lot older than me, and the Bible is a lot older than uh, most of us here in this room, okay? So uh, anyway, Jeremiah chapter 7, and uh, just a sweet spirit here, honestly. It's always encouraging. There are certain churches you walk through the door and you can just feel it. And uh, this church is just like that. It's just a blessing, encouragement. As Pastor said, just electricity in the air. Excited to hear from God. Excited to hear the songs. Excited to hear the preaching. I just want to commend you for that. And I know that is a great commentary on your pastor as well. And uh, the man leading you. And I hope you encourage him. I hope you uh, help him. And I hope that you lift him up. And uh, I know that he loves every single one of you, and I know that uh, his heart for you is just what's going on tonight, the electricity, the excitement, and uh, growing closer to God through this service. So Jeremiah chapter 7, and uh, we'll read there in just a second, but I keep saying that. You keep looking down, and I keep seeing you look up again, but we'll get there in just a second. Honestly, uh, thank you for being with us, and uh, thank you for letting us be with you, and uh, thank you for coming tonight. Prayer is a vital part of the Christian life. Many of us would agree with that statement. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer. Luke 18, 1, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Romans 12, 12, continuing instant in prayer. 1 Peter 4, 7, about the end of all things that is at hand, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. But in this passage of Jeremiah chapter 7, and verse number 14, the Bible gives us a time that God says not to pray. Look here in verse number 14. The Bible says, I'm sorry, verse number 16. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. Neither lift up cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me. For I will not hear thee. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray you please bless our uh, moments around your word tonight. Lord, I pray you please open up our hearts. And Lord, that how the music has stirred us and encouraged us. And Lord, prepared us for your word. And Lord, I pray that you please fill me with your spirit. I pray you please fill uh, the congregation here with your spirit as well, listening and be able to accept the word that is preached to them tonight. Help their hearts to be uh, the good ground, uh, Lord, ready to receive what you have for us. And Lord, I pray you please bless these next couple moments in Jesus' name. Amen. What an amazing statement that God himself would tell the prophet of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I don't want you to pray. He says, don't pray, don't make intercession. I don't want to hear anything about these people. Uh, he re reiterates this in uh, Jeremiah chapter 11, verse number 14. He practically says the same thing. God says, therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. What an amazing statement by a God who we know wants us to pray. We just listed off verses about prayer and the importance of prayer for our Christian life, but what an amazing statement for a God, our Father, to tell Jeremiah the prophet, don't pray. You see, there is a time when God himself says not 
to pray. The question is tonight, when does God say not to pray? What are the signs? What are the reasons that God himself would tell Jeremiah the preacher, would tell his people, don't pray? Well, very quickly tonight, let's look at three reasons that God in his sovereignty commands us not to pray. Verse number nine in this chapter gives us the first reason. Verse number nine says, uh, will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations? Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. The first reason that God says not to pray are there are abominations in the house of God. There are abominations in the house of God. God says here to Jeremiah, the message for these people is don't you understand what you're doing? Bring this sin into the house of God. Bring these abominations, these idols, the th wicked things of your heart into my house for this is my house. And he repeats it over and over again. And he says, look, you think you're free to do all these things, but you have abominations in my house. Ezekiel chapter eight, verse 17 says, then he said unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light? thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here for they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger and lo they put the branch to their nose referring to the branches of idol worship and kind of a figuratively uh, sticking up their nose uh, in scorn to God uh, verse 18 says therefore will I also deal in fury mine eye shall not spare neither will I have pity and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice yet I will not hear them. Ezekiel 20, verse 39 says, As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord of God, Go ye, serve ye everyone his idols, and hereunto also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye not my holy name, no more with your gifts and with your idols. Deuteronomy chapter 7 says, The graven images of their God shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. And I have no doubt that we have all heard the illustration of the fact that we don't go home. I hope we don't go home and have a little Buddha or a little idol that we bow down to and pray to. I hope no one in this room does that. But you know what? We've all heard the illustration that we have those idols in our hearts. But let me take it a, a step further. You see what we do in the house of God is when we have these abominations, I'm going to let the hymnal represent our idols. Okay, no, there's no, no parallel here, but I'm just going to let, use this here. And we walk into church and, and a piano's playing and man, we're excited. And uh, okay, I got, but we have kind of our abomination and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, we kind of hide it. We walk in the door like, okay, all right, here we go. Oh, good to see you tonight. Oh, brother, hey, sister, good to see you. Praise God. All right. Okay, here all right, oh, good, 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 good. I'm oh, fine in my seat. All right, very good. All right, service is getting started. Singing, oh, good, good. All right, enjoy the singing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's a preaching. Okay, hold on, hold on, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? No, it's, it's almost over. It's almost over, it's almost over. Okay, uh, invitation. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. <gasps> Closing prayer. Oh, good. We made it through another one. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We're done. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. I hope that wasn't too hard on you. Um, we'll, we'll go. Okay. We'll, we'll be fine. Okay. All right. Good to see you, brother. Hope you have a good day. All right. Amen. Praise God. And we walk out the door and we still have our idols. We still have our abominations. We have these things in our heart and we walk through the doors of the house of God. And we think that no one can see, but God himself can see. 
God himself can see our hearts. God himself can see the abominations, the idols in our hearts. And even though we feel like we can put on a show for the pastor, or we can put on a show for the, the, uh, the, ch the, uh, ch the music pastor, or we can put up a show for the youth pastor, we can put on a show for our friends at church. And yet, even though we have an abomination in our heart, we walk through and we think we can get through it. And we walk out of those doors the same person and we bring abominations into the house of God. And God says, if you have abomination, Nations, if you have sin in your heart, don't pray because I can't hear you. Abominations in the house of God. And yet, let's take it even a step further because Proverbs chapter 6 lists off some abominations. Would you turn there very quickly? Proverbs chapter 6 gives us some abominations to God. And we're not talking about the physical idols tonight, we're speaking of things of the heart. Or speaking of idols of the heart. And in Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 16, the Bible says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are a what? Abomination. Abomination unto him. And he lists them off. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. An heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Unfortunately, that list is so prevalent in most of our Baptist churches. And yet we think we're fine. We're not going home and bowing down to the television. We're not going home and bowing down to our wallet. But we still have those abominations in the heart. I'm afraid that the list that Proverbs gives us is a list that every single person in this room struggles with, at least one. And yet, we still bring them in. We walk through those doors and we ignore the conviction of God. God says, if you're struggling with pride, lying, hatred, and bitterness, wicked and selfish thoughts, deception and discord in the house of God, God says, don't worry about praying because he can't hear you. Verse number 13 gives us the second reason. Not only do we see abominations in the house of God, but verse 13 tells us, And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Secondly, the second reason would be apathy in hearing God. Apathy in hearing God. You see, oftentimes we walk into the house of God with our abominations in our heart and we sit under the preaching of the word of God and very soon we develop an apathy. We've heard it all before. We've heard the stories. We've heard the doctrine. We've heard the lessons. We've heard it all before and it's not going to change us. Psalm 81 tells us, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me me and Israel had walked in my ways. Do you hear the pain in the heart of God as he says, oh, that my people, oh, that my people would follow me. Oh, that my people would hear my word. Oh, that the, 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 the Bible, my word would be more interesting to them than the news channel. Oh, that my word would be more interesting to them to their, than their favorite sitcom. Oh, that my word would be more interesting to them to their, their girlfriend or their boyfriend or their family or whatever it is that's taking the place of God's word oh that my people would hear my voice but they didn't they would not 
Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you. It's called your pastor. Your watchmen over you. And they said, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Ezekiel chapter 33 is a very interesting verse. Chapter, Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 31. God is describing the state of Ezekiel's future congregation. And I don't know about you, but we'll read this in a second. But if I would have heard this starting out in ministry, I would be very discouraged. And God is just telling Ezekiel the truth. He's saying, this is how your congregation, this is how the, the Jews are going to be to your preaching, to your ministry. He says in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31, and they come unto thee, speaking of Ezekiel, they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Verse 32, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. You see, I love singing in the church. I love the music. I love the hymns. I love the songs that we just heard. Oh, but it's very easy when we sing our familiar songs to just kind of just kind of uh, sink through it and think about the ball game or think about the, ne the meal uh, next or think about something else. You know what, as we have a special up here and as this group just sang, many of us sat in the pews and thought, wow, that, that was encouraging, that was great. Oh, what a lovely song. Oh, what a wonderful presentation. Oh, what beautiful voices. But unfortunately, we do the same thing with the preaching. Preacher gets up and he preaches to us and we think, oh, what a lovely voice. Well, maybe not for me. I'm losing my voice, if you haven't tell. But what a lovely voice. Or, oh, uh, what a beautiful song. Oh, music to my ears. And we don't put it in our heart. Many of us watch preaching just like we watch a song, just like we watch television. It's just, it's just another thing to watch. It doesn't get in here. And you know what that's called? That's called apathy in hearing God. And that's called, God says, don't even worry about praying. Don't pray to me. If you're not going to listen to me, why should I listen to you? Zechariah chapter 7 says, Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. So the first reason for God says not to pray are the abominations in the house of God. The second reason would be the apathy in hearing God. But lastly, tonight, we see the absence of the hand of God. The absence of the hand of God. Look at verse number 24 of Jeremiah chapter 7. He says, But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Jeremiah 8, 5 says, why, why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to seat. They refuse to return. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27, saying to a stock, thou art my father and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, arise and save us. 
But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. God says, look, if you're going to keep backsliding, I'm going to remove my hand. If you're going to keep these abominations in your heart, I'm going to remove my hand. If you're going to not listen to the words that I have to say, if you're going to have apathy and your hearts are going to be a stone, I'm going to remove my hand. Because obviously you don't need me anymore. Obviously those abominations, those, that lust, that pride in your heart is going to help you more than I ever could. But then soon a trial comes. And we realize that pride in our heart is not going to help us anymore. That selfishness in our heart, that sowing discord among the brethren, that bitterness is not going to help us anymore. And we turn to God and we say, arise and save us, God. Oh, we need revival. Oh, America is going downhill. Oh, we have problem after problem. Oh, we have the gay agenda. Oh, we have all of the, the, the abortion agenda. Oh, we have the liberalism. Oh, we have these awful philosophies of humanism coming into our churches and coming into our homes. Homes. Oh, we see the compromise. Oh, we see the standards falling. We saw the walls falling. And yet we come to God and we say, arise, save us. And God says, wait, you want to hear me? So why am I going to hear you? Don't pray. I'm going to go send revival to India. I'm going to go send revival to the Philippines. I'm going to go send revival to a people who want to hear my word and thirst for it. You say, arise and save us. But let your pride save you. Let your selfishness save you. Let your bitterness save you. Oh, that we would have some Christians today who would put away the abominations and would say, God, I need your hand and I'm, go I'm tired of the absence of your hand. I'm going to remove the abominations. I'm going to remove the apathy. And God, I need to hear from you. Save our nation. Save my family. Save our church. We need you, God. And I'm going to put away what I need to. And I'm going to go and follow you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my might. Oh, God, please save us. And I'm willing to to forsake everything and sacrifice for you. Why doesn't God work anymore? Why don't we see revivals as we did back in the day of Edwards and Whitfield and Moody and Torrey and Sunday? Why don't we see thousands of people coming to God anymore? Why, do we see, why don't we see God work anymore? Well, why don't we see God's hand in our families in our churches, in our nation. Why don't we see God's hand in our own lives? Well, it might just be because of the abominations. It might just be because of the pride, the lying, the hatred and the bitterness, the wicked, wicked and selfish thoughts, the deception, the discord. And it might just be because of the apathy in hearing God. And we care more about entertainment than hearing the word of God himself. And now we reap the results and we have an absence of hearing God. The absence of the hand of God. Oh God, give us some Christians today. In this church, Lighthouse Baptist Church, who would say, I am going to follow God without reserve. And I'm going to give up these idols that I've been hanging on for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm going to forsake them. And I'm going to listen to the word of God. I'm not going to have a heart of stone. I can't, I'm going to forsake my apathy because I long for the hand of God on my life. Now, lest you think I have taken a solitary passage in Jeremiah and tried to scare you with it. Let me, in closing, give you some verses that might help us with this truth. Isaiah 1, 15 through 16, And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when we make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil. Micah 3, 4. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, 
but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them in that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Psalm 1841, they cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Proverbs 1, when ye, your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but I shall not, oh, they shall not find me, for they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 28, 9, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Psalm 66, 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Jeremiah 14, verse 11, Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. Oh, Christian, listen. God wants you to forsake the abominations, forsake the apathy, forsake the absence of his hand. And he wants you to come and forsake those things so he can bless you and so he can say, pray to me. So if we don't, he's going to look and say, uh, don't pray. There's no use. I can't hear you. But if you take the next few moments this evening and give up your sin and apathy in your life, you can sing with the psalmist in Psalm 66, 20. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Let's pray. Dear God, we are a needy people. Lord, I pray that you would please touch our hearts, break our hearts of stone. Lord, I'm afraid that as we come before you and we pray in a trial or we have a need, I'm afraid with too many of us, you just you say, don't pray. I can't hear you. You've got to forsake some abominations. You're bringing these abominations into my house. I can't hear you. You have apathy in hearing me. Why should I listen to you? And soon your hand is lifted and absent in our lives. Lord, give us a generation of Christians with a resolve to be able to long and thirst for your hand and for revival. God, I pray you please bless this invitation. In Jesus' name.